Good morning everyone. It's the fourth day of the Easter long weekend, Monday morning. I hope you had a good Easter. I was in the shower this morning listening to Triple M as I sometimes do uh, when I get sick of listening to the news on the radio. Uh, and this morning there was a promo for Easter. It said, Jesus, uh, he walked on water. He died for our sins, but his greatest miracle was giving us a four day weekend. <laughs> And I had to laugh. Uh, I don't agree with the uh, order of priorities there and what's the greatest. But we did get two absolute stunning truths for Triple M on the radio. Well done, Triple M. And next year, let's hope that they can uh, drop the talk about the long weekend and just talk about the great things Jesus has done. But I won't get my hopes up too high for that. Uh, anyway, we come to Psalm 66. We're beginning to get into a series of Psalms that aren't Davidic Psalms uh, as we move towards the third book of the Psalms uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but uh, today we're on Psalm 66 uh, and it's a great Psalm and I think it's worth reading to start with uh, like you're Jewish, like you're a Jew thinking about it and then think about it again as we actually are as redeemed Christians saved by Jesus. Uh, so first pass through Psalm 66, uh, verses 1 to 4, Shout joyfully to God all the earth. Sing about the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Uh, it's a great call for God's people to praise God's name uh, and talking about the victory of God's people. Uh, then we move into verses 5 to 9. It's almost like apologetics, but from a Jewish point of view, Come and see the wonders of God. His acts for humanity are awe-inspiring. He turned the sea into dry land and they crossed the river on foot and, and so on. And we recount the history that the Jews would have known and uh, they would have expected people to hear about these things and want to become Jewish. From verse 10 to 12, for you, God, tested us. You refined us as silver is refined. You allured us into a trap. You placed burdens on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out to abundance. And as you hear that through Jewish ears, you, you think of all the trials from the slavery in Egypt and the wandering in the desert, the conquest of the land, the failure to live in the land the way that God wanted, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and indeed, God tested his people, refined his people, but it wasn't like it was God's fault. Uh, you just have to read the stories to know that the sin of the people caused these things to happen. And yet, even so, God was faithful and brought them out to abundance. Uh, verses 13 to 15, I will enter your house with burnt offerings. I'll pay you my vows that my lips promised and my, and my mouth spoke during my distress. I will offer you fattened sheep as burnt offerings with the fragrant smoke of rams. I will sacrifice oxen with goats. And this is just a reminder now for the Jewish people that their relationship continues, that God is merciful and kind. And despite their sin and the testing because of it, still they can have relationship with God and on his terms. This is talking about the Old Testament sacrificial system. And then it finishes 16 to 20. Come and listen, all who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for me. See, in the end, this is a personal testimony. This is the story of one person's trusting in God and turning to praise in verse 20. May God be praised. He has not turned away my prayer or turned his faithful love from me. And even as you hear those last few verses, it does make you think that, that even though there was a sense of corporate salvation for the Jews, that, that as a people by their blood through Abraham they would be saved, it's always been the case that individuals have to listen to God. Individuals have to pray to God. Individuals have to have faith in God to have relationship with Him. And so it becomes personal by the end. May God be praised. He has not turned away my prayer or turned his lo faithful love from me. And that is the story of the whole Old Testament and New Testament, that each of us, before our God, needs to respond to him. But now thinking about it, what does Easter do for us in Psalm 66? Well, I think to start with, verses 1 to 4, as we say to the world, shout joyfully all the earth, sing about the glory of his name does make you think that in Jesus, the message of the gospel has gone 
to the whole world. Uh, the awe-inspiring works of Jesus at the cross are being proclaimed. And yesterday, with all the social media and all the media attention on Easter, looking for different kinds of news, we got a lot of attention. The gospel message rang out around the earth and, and many did praise God's name yesterday. May many more have been saved for the first time yesterday. And then verses 5 to 9, reflecting upon what God has done. Well, well we can include the creation story. We can in include the foundation of the promises to Abraham that established the way of salvation for humanity. But we'd want to center it on Jesus. We'd want to say that Easter, Good Friday... Jesus' death for our sins and his resurrection on Easter Sunday, that is the centre of the historical story that should inspire humanity. That in that, people should see the wonders of God because in the end, God came to save us. And then verses 10 to 12, uh, just like the Old Testament Jewish people were tested, those who would have been faithful, persevered through testing, so Christians find testing. COVID-19, whatever you want it to be, we are refined uh, and our perseverance through our trials shows the genuineness of our faith. It builds us up in our character and our love of the Lord. So this still happens. God doesn't send it because he's trying to test us. Are you good enough? God knows the world is broken and isn't part of it. These trials show the genuineness of our trust in him and build us up to trust him even more. Uh, verses 13 to 15 about relationship with God. Well, well, it's not now a sacrificial system, not burnt offerings and vows. Now we come directly to God through Jesus. And so this is where it gets a bit personal. Are you coming to God through Jesus? This can't be academic. We can't finish Psalm 66 and go, well done, close our book for the end of the day. We, we must pray. And it must be a personal prayer. And that's what we get to in 16 to 20, come and listen all who fear God and I'll tell what he has done for me. Here is the power of the gospel. It's the one by one by one story, testimony of salvation. It's your story. It's my story. It's what God has done for us. And at the moment, we have this great opportunity to share our stories. You've got lots of time to craft your story and find ways to put it out on social media platforms or tell it to people who are bored and use Zoom to talk to whoever. Uh, now is the moment to say, this is what God has done for me. May God be praised because he hasn't turned away from me. And he listens to my prayer and he's shown his faithful love to me through Christ. He has not turned away. It's a great message of the gospel. It's a message of hope relevant for the current time. And so I will finish by praying, but really I'll encourage you to pray, to think of Psalm 66 from a Christian perspective, more than that, from your perspective as a saved sinner through Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks for Easter. We thank you that your name was indeed praised yesterday in all sorts of ways. Even on radio stations like Triple M, they stated truths. And yet not all people believe it, not all people know it as their own faith just yet. So we pray for our society to be saved. We pray that our society will hear the message of Easter, not laugh, but repent and believe and see the wonders that you would come to us. And Lord, more than that, we pray for ourselves. May we declare personally what you have done for us. May we be little examples walking around in our communities of your great love to humanity. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, please carry on in prayer and then enjoy the rest of your Easter Monday. See you soon.